class four looks mm. quite deep, as in in a car. You that was that's that's someone who's too young to think about killing themselves. Why are you watching a lot of movies? What really? I have you? not seen much to convince me yeah. that there was a purpose for me to be alive. And that's why I, I attempted three times. Probably those ideas of the devil. Yeah. Because where I am today, as much as at times you wake up and the things are not working out the way you want them yeah. to work out, but I don't think at any point in my recent years has it ever crossed me once again that mm. I have to take away my life. Yeah. But uh, when it backfired, I think I clearly, I mean, I, at that time I counted myself as a failure because if I can even fail to die, then... <laughs> Uh -huh. Then I mean, I might, I might as well uh, try to succeed to survive. Mm. So now. He Hello and Karibuni Tana to Glow Up with Makena. I'm your girl Makena and today we have an amazing, amazing, sensational, legendary guest in studio with me. Legendary? Why do I feel so old already? <laughs> <laughs> you are oh legendary. Oh you are legendary. Next actually. you're going to be veteran. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, we have the amazing Dr. Ofaneka. And guys, before that, I know he's your favorite host. He's your favorite MC. He's your favorite YouTuber as well. He's your favorite comedian. And he's your favorite everything. Ah, kabla ni mleta sasa on site for you. Uh, we are at Pete's Cafe, our normal place. It's such an amazing, such a beautiful, serene environment to be in. Guys, this is Pete's Cafe. Uh, it's located in Yangumi Road, place in it where the Ark. Uh, they have uh, the Taco Tuesdays. They have on Wednesdays, the Ladies Night. On Fridays, they also have the amazing, amazing Friday vibes where they bring the DJ and he plays your favorite song. And their foods are delicious. Work on the amazing PR skills. PR services and at the same time their products and food and drinks Nitamu. Ama just you can confirm that for me. Of course, I always hang around and of course when Dr. Fonica Live is also short here as well. And there's a reason why class attracts class. So I mean I wouldn't be here if all that was not true. So most definitely yes. So many it's a classy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, my darling? I'm okay, I'm okay. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for inviting me. Asante I'm, I'm really trying to run away from, from interviews and why <laughs> <laughs> I know you are, but come on. I'm your mm. little girl you just heard. No, no, I I understand. I yeah. understand. It's okay. Yeah. Talk to me. Ah, yeah. So, so, so mm. I know we all know about you, but kiddo go to let's give us a brief. Mm. Who is Ofoene? Okay. Um Dr. Fonik. Dr. Fonik is um is a top TV host. Yes. Is a top uh, radio host, a top events host. Mm -hmm. Uh also a soon to be author as well. Ooh. And of course uh, a YouTuber. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, and also the managing director of Yolo Creative Agency as well. Yes. Yes, so that's basically who I am. Yeah. And of course, a father to three beautiful girls, Faith, Debbie, and Ashley. Uh -huh. So yes, that's uh, that's who I am. Oh, that's mm. really nice. I am so off for Ulianza Wapi Sasa. Your uh, comedy journey. Ulianza VP, did you start as a comedian? Ama did you start as a host? Because you're a whole package. I started as a comedian. Um, I remember my first, uh, my first stint uh, into TV was uh, into... Uh, entertainment was through. Um, when was it? When was it? I, I started as a roadshow MC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I used to do roadshow road shows yeah. everywhere. Mm -hmm. Then I moved from roadshow MCs. I moved to set books mm -hmm. at Kenya National Theatre. Yeah. Then from then, then I now moved to to radio. So yeah. of course that was at Milele FM back in the days. Yeah. Then of course radio, and then that's when I joined TV. My first TV gig was uh, uh, Vitimbi, which I did for around three four months. Mm -hmm. Then I moved to Vioja Makamani, which I did for almost three, three, four years. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And this is a road shows. Where were you brought up? You were uh, your Penyoli Lelewa, Penyoli Zaliwa. I mean, me grew up places more, but I've been, uh -huh. um, I've been, I've been born in a uh, Madare, Madare North to be specifically. Yes. Then I moved, uh, moved to a place called Botella. So we lived in Botella for around uh, two years. Then from there, Dandora, and then mm -hmm. Uruma, yeah. then, uh, then Kino at some point. Uh -huh. Then I went to the village. Mm -hmm. Then uh, when I came back to the village, uh, better part until when I moved out of my parents' house um, was uh, in Kibera. Yeah. So basically, I'm a mixture of uh, village and ghetto boy. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Talk about Mejikaza. Yeah. Mm. Like in this history, a road show, Ulianza VP, were you in school at that time? Because when you got your first job, you were 19 years, right? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, so. No, immediately I left, yeah. Uh -huh. 
even when I left high school, I already knew what I wanted to be. Oh. So I was I was gonna be two things. I was gonna be a lawyer and I was gonna be a, a, an entertainer as well. Mm -hmm. So when I left, I left it hitting the ground running. I already started looking for jobs for entertainment. Yeah. And uh, well, the sun was my was on my side, and of course I started getting uh, gigs for road shows. So I would go around the country. Um, remember the last road show I did was uh, I was trying to teach uh, uh, women that when their husbands come home and their husbands are too drunk, but they still want to get something. Um, so I used to have a certain um, bow mm -hmm. <laughs> that used to look like a. This look like a penis. Okay. <laughs> so you do have, uh, help women, show women how to valise it, protection. Uh -huh. uh, until one day, I, I, after that role show, I went home and I told God, this was not the idea yeah. of what I really wanted to be in terms of a comedian and an MC. Yeah. And of course, from that door started opening and opening. Of course, 13 years down the line, I mean, we can all attest. Yes. Uh, there's no little space of regret at all. Yeah. Yes. Did your guardian know about that, by the way? Yes, my in fact, my parents have been very supportive of my career right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. My my mom, right from high school, was very supportive. Yeah. My dad into my career. Of course, there's, there are those uh, uh, moments where they're a little bit scared and panicking. What if it works? What if it doesn't work? Yeah. Because, I mean, the entertainment industry is very much competitive. And um, at times, they're not really sure if this will work out for their son or not. Yeah. So that's why my dad will insist I balance between uh, campo and entertainment. Yeah. But of course, a good thing is it, it worked out. So my, my parents have basically been very supportive yeah. in terms of who I really wanted to be in life. Mm. And I can tell you, those are, those are my, I, I meet guys telling me, oh my God, I'm your number one fan. I'm, I'm like, no, <laughs> my parents are my number one fan. Oh. You look for position number three, four, five. <laughs> but okay, I, even my daughters are my number one fan. I'm, okay. Everybody is number one. Everybody eh? is number, four, number one. But my parents basically have been very, very extremely supportive yeah. of what I do across the years. Mm. Yeah. And you've always been known for these Nigerian accents. Often, like, is there a point that you may lower Niger? Um, I can say the influence probably came from uh, the church I grew up. Okay. Uh, I, grew up I grew up in, um, at Winners Chapel, mm -hmm. a church that I pay so much respect, respect to because it grew me to the man that I am in terms of character. In terms of the, in terms of um, my my spiritual life, mm. and also because a lot of Nigerians, it also influenced the character. Yes, but I have never, I've, I've said it time and time, that because I, 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 I don't find, I, I don't have strength to mm. force people to believe that. Oh my God, I'm from Nigeria. You must believe it in <laughs> Jesus' name, Amen. Uh -huh. No, no, no. I tell guys, I've never been to Nigeria. This is a character that we I picked up as Dr. Fenwick. Yeah. You get. Yeah. But then again, it's not the character that is it's not the accent that is supposed to be funny. Mm. It's the content in the accent that is supposed to be funny. Yeah. The the accent is only supposed to be a vehicle mm. to, to to transport the content. Yeah. yeah. So the question is with or without the, the with or without uh the accent, is of Dr. Fenneke still funny as well? Yes. Exactly. Yeah. So the accent was only supposed to just transport it. Mm. So I have been to better part of Africa. I mean, going down from TZ mm. all the way to USA. I've been to all those countries in the South. Mm. But I've never really had much, much interest of going upwards into Nigeria. Yeah. Of course, I have received requests. Mm. Um, uh, the guy called, there's a guy called Nkemo Wo, mm. a.k.a. Osofia. Mm. He's invited me a couple of times. Mama G, Patience Ozoko, has invited me a couple of times. Um, Clean the Drunk, a very yeah. good friend of mine. Yeah. Uh, the few comedians who are my friends, and yeah. we talk, uh, uh, Josh Tufani, but I've never really, really, really had the interest of... Why, though? Nah, I, simply because um, I think also Dr. Fenneke as a brand is growing, and we are, we are, I'm, I'm also now out busting from the, from the accent yeah. to... How do I put it? I'm at a point where by with or without the accent, I, I am okay. Yeah. So I really don't I really don't find that much there's really that much need of for me to go to Nigeria. Mm. Yeah. But again, if I I know one day I'm gonna go there, mm. but not not really for comedy purposes, maybe for other maybe for business meetings, maybe for um an acting role, mm. whichever way. Oh, you also mm. an actor? Yeah, I mean that's why I was at Vioja and with Timbi. Yeah. And I was also among the best actors back in high school. Mm. Yeah. So I I mean being and being uh, being artistic, being comedy is, is acting at the end of the day. Yeah. I mean, what I've been doing with Ophonic as a brand is basically that's what I've been acting all the time. Yeah. yeah. Do you think your Nigerian accent has given you a step ahead of other uh, Kenyan uh, comedians, maybe? No. To the international world? No, no, no. Uh -huh. Using English 
as a medium of communication is what has given me uh, a step ahead okay. compared to my fellow counterparts in the industry. Mm. And uh, when I was coming in, um, my dream was, was, was most definitely to go international. My dream was uh, to go to Hollywood. My dream was to become the first ever stand-up comedian from Africa, to host some of these uh, big shows from BET to Grammys, to Choice Awards, yeah. to Neighborhood Awards, to uh, Hoodies Awards, all those top awards yeah. from all those stores. My dream was to be the first ever stand-up, and I wouldn't have done that or be able to achieve that if Sheng or Swahili yeah. was my medium of communication. Yeah. And I think it has really worked for me both uh, locally and internationally. Mm. I have done so many shows um, uh, internationally. And also locally, uh, whenever you have uh, probably in, uh, expatriates coming to Kenya for an event, mm -hmm. most of the time the number one comedian that comes to mind is Dr. Fennel because it's easy for me to communicate. Yeah. Exactly. And I mean, English is the, is the simplest medium, it's the, it's the SI medium of communication across the world. Mm. So I, I find it hard when people say, oh my God, they won't understand English. But I mean, if you can understand how are you, what's my name, what's your name, where are you going from, why? Uh -huh. I mean, then you can basically understand English. Yeah. Yes. And before we even get to how you uh, landed yourself a role mm. as a host mm. for BET Awards, mm. I want to take you a little bit back Kidogo, mm. where you were like contemplating, contemplating huh, mm. to commit suicide. I, I take, I, that's why I really take matters about, um, I take matters of uh, mental health very yes. serious. Yes. And um, especially, um, and this one I'm going to be a little bit biased, especially for the men. Yes. Because if we check the statistics, men are the ones who are suffering in every negative way. Yes. When it comes to unemployment, men have the highest um, percentage. When it comes to um, uh, depression, men are the highest. When it comes to uh, homeless, men are the highest yeah. percentage when it comes to suicide rates men are the highest it's unfortunate that men are winning in every negative way and um it's because men have not been taught or the society has not given us enough room for us to be able to speak out yeah. about how we feel inside because all is expected is for us to be strong 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 and nothing less than strong yeah. and anytime a man portrays any level of weakness um there's always a fear of rejection fear of being backlashed yeah fear of somebody dissing you i mean look at it when the video of uh Tyrus went around yeah. uh, Tyrus was crying everybody made memes I mean, out of it yeah. when the video of um the uh the photo and the video of um michael jordan went around mm. and guys were crying why am i going even far when the video of uh jaguar the member of parliament for Sarai, during the nominations for jubilee and the last election when he cried because he had unfairly been uh, denied his nomination and he cried it was made a meme. And it's unfortunate that when men cry out, when men come out to talk about how they feel, we turn into memes. And when ladies talk about how they feel, apparently whenever you try to make a joke out of it, everybody comes for you, they're like, oh my God, you're not supposed to do that. So, and um, I was coming from a place where there's so many things I was going through as a child, of which at that time I felt it was too heavy for me. And um, at, at that time, I mean, we were not as exposed as we are right now. Or maybe I had not seen I had not seen much to convince me yeah. that there was a purpose for me to be alive. Yeah. That's why I, I attempted three times. But then again, the reason why I'm alive today is because, simply because God had a reason. God had a purpose why I had to be alive today. Yeah. And that's why I keep on telling people the most dangerous thing is living without knowing your purpose. Yeah. Living without knowing your purpose is you're nothing less than a mosquito when you're just waiting to die. Yeah. You're just like a hospital waiting to die. Yeah. But the moment you discover your purpose, the moment you discover why you wake up every single morning, yeah. why God wakes you up, then it gives you, it gives you morale, it gives you a boost of, of, of something to look forward to. Yeah. So the first thing is, first of all, discover your purpose in life. What were you born for? Yeah. Which lives were you born to impact? Yeah. The moment you discover that, then, it's, then you're good to go. How old were you at that time? I think I was very small. I think I was in class four. Yes, I was, I was in class four at that time. Somewhere mm. in a place called Malava. Malava is in the deep, deep western part of Kenya. Class four looks mm. quite deep, as in in a car. You that was that's that's someone who's too young to think about killing was, themselves. While you watching a lot of movies, what really? I wish I, I wish I had the opportunity to watch movies because mm. those are some of the things. Because I was not being allowed. I felt at that time I was not being allowed to be a child mm. because uh, already at that age and that class, I had like a, my week was already busy because I was either in school or somewhere in the forest. Yeah taking care of people's beans and maize and, 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 uh, and all manner of farm produce yes. uh, for me to earn an opportunity or a chance to go to school. 
and um, um and it i think it's because you see the devil works in weird ways yeah the devil is able the devil as as much as god is able to spot uh to spot uh, something special even when he's still growing and for me i i want to i want to admit that, that those are probably ideas of the devil not even probably those are ideas of the devil yeah. because where i am today as much as at times you wake up and the things are not working out the way you want them yeah. to work out but i don't think at any point in my recent years has it ever crossed me once again that mm. i have to take away my life yeah. you get so i think it's because I, i i felt like i was not being given opportunity to grow up as a child mm. and then um there were so many things going on in my life at that time yeah. but uh, when it backfired i think i clear i mean I, at that time i counted myself as a failure because if i can even fail to die then <laughs> Uh-huh. then i mean a mother but as well i uh, try to succeed to survive mm. so now uh, here we are yeah mm. and then how did you know land your role who are the first african comedian well we didn't get there yet those are dream those are <laughs> <laughs> but we will no get way. there but we will get there but oh, we will oh, get there. You, you no, 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 no 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 it's a tag you see it's me speaking oh into the future oh my god it's me speaking into the future for real of which is going to happen yes it is actually it's yes, a big yes, deal already yes it is going to happen yeah mm. so which opportunity opened up a lot of doors for you um which opportunity um which new opportunity gani moja ilikuwa fungua kwa wa Kenya na dunia nzima i know when uh, i know when i joined uh, i know when i joined the Churchill the Churchill crew yes uh that was really really i was already big at that time but Churchill show now uh catapulted me now to a bigger to a, big, to a bigger level yeah. because now out of that and now officially now became among the kings of comedy in Kenya and i uh, funny now group be a very respectable brand especially especially in the corporate world and also grew to become um the most preferred among the few most preferred family brands yeah. in Kenya yeah. So I think the Churchill show really did a big deal yeah. in pushing the brand up. Yeah. yeah. So who approached you? Did you approach Churchill? Did he approach you to be on the show? How did that I know happen? him and him and I met a couple of times and he would always tell me, "Yeah, please when you find time, uh-huh. uh, come to the Churchill show." So I think the time I was ready, I went uh, I went through the normal process of audition and um two or three times I went through and I succeeded and um I earned my place. Yeah. Uh, on the table. Yeah. Yes. And then what's your take on those people who disrespect Churchill as the father? You know, kuna wakati ilikuwa inasemekana hako wanawalipa, mm. aliwacheza, he was benefiting from you guys. Some, not like mm. not everyone was saying that, but But, but you see this is the, this is the thing, huh? Uh-huh. One thing we need to understand is first of all, <laughs> what's the name on the show? Churchill show. It's his show. Yes. So if you wake up in the morning and decide to close the show, there is nothing you're going to do about it yes. it's his fucking show yeah. so you all better hold it to yourself uh-huh. number 2 uh-huh. it's simply because um there are two ways of looking at it yes. either you want to that instant um you want the instant uh, success. what what success, not even success as mm-hmm. such instant reward mm-hmm. of that money you paid him lead up to the show or the money you paid up to the show else yes. or you look at it from a different different perspective mm-hmm. which is There are almost five more than 500 comedians mm. who go through that process by the time you guys to see the guys you see on TV. Yes. You've got an opportunity. You've ended up on TV. Mm. You've ended up on stage first of all. Yes. You end up on the live audience. There are almost like 50 comedians. Then only probably five or six end up on Churchill Row. Mm. Then almost like four or five end up on Churchill Show. Those are 10. Yeah. Then you end up on 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 live TV mm. as well. Mm. You've been given 10 minutes. on a crowd on an audience of more than 10 million 10 million views. Yeah. So is your mind going to be focused on this on the money you're going to be paid after the show or is your mind going to be focused on using this 10 minutes mm. to create a name for yourself a platform so that now you can be able to attract events worth 200,000. Now that's how some of us looked at it the likes of me uh Obina um Chipkizi Sleepy Butita. Yeah. That's how we are in Ahamu. That's how we looked at it. Yeah. You get? Yeah. That's why now Dr. Fenege can comfortably ask for 200,000 and nothing less yeah. for an event because I was able to capitalize at that time. But if my mind was so focused on Churchill Mast, Churchill Mast, Churchill mm-hmm. Mast. Mm-hmm. It's his show. In fact, <laughs> for heaven's sake, this nigga was doing us a favor. <laughs> yeah. You get? Yeah. I mean, if he decided to I mean, he has all the money. If he decided to close down the show, my mm-hmm. mother's have well closed down the show. Yeah. Exactly. And then now you came and there was such a big show. ilikuwa yako Thursday night live, live with Dr. Foneke yani 
Mom, Dad, this is for you, by the way. I want, I want to realize that. Hello. So, um, <laughs> they love you to death. Now, my sister. No, it's a big shout out to them. Now, TNL, um, TNL did not start from KTN. It started, started from, uh, it was actually, the, the original name was actually Tonight Live mm. with Dr. Fanning. That was at Abu. Yes. And I'm always grateful to Abu TV because they're the first ones who gave me an opportunity mm -hmm. when I sold to them the idea of having the first ever comedy talk show in Kenya. Yes. Because uh, Churchill's show was not, a, was, not a, was not a comedy talk show. It was a stand-up stand -up comedy show yes. with an interview. Mm. Now Dr. Foneke comes in with the first ever uh, comedy talk show yeah. in Kenya. Yeah. So what we did amazing, I mean, uh, by the time we had April, uh, we, and uh, of course uh, with my bro, mm -hmm. uh, Krim de la Krim, DJ Krim, uh, Krim. Mm -hmm. we were able, we were doing big numbers at that time. Yeah. I mean, compared to a station which was not, uh, which was not uh, mainstream, yeah. we were breaking in big numbers. And that's when now um, KTN called me. Yes. And KTN now poached us mm -hmm. from April to um, heading all the way to KTN. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's when now I left it for my brother Chip Kizzy. Yeah. But now Chip Kizzy now joined um, Ebro TV. Mm -hmm. And um, from there, we, TNL, four years, it was an amazing success. Yes. I count it as one of my biggest success yeah. as, a, as a TV host. And yeah. I love the way until today guys still ask, where did TNL go? So probably if TNL is going to come, come back or not, um, I mean, God knows. Oh, you're not sure that it's going to come back, but you have I, I've never closed. I've never closed the idea in my mind that TNL will not be back. It uh -huh. might be back on air. Yeah. When I don't know, but uh, we've been having a lot of conversations with various TV stations, which have some of them have been approaching me. Yeah. So I think it's only a matter of me feeling if it's okay to go back on mainstream TV or not. Maybe yeah. because I also have my other projects to do. Yeah, and your YouTube um, channel, which is doing amazing. And it's and doing well. amazing. Thank you so much to guys who are watching Dr. Foneke uh live as well yes thank you so much yeah mm. no no we 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 had a mutual argument okay with, uh, with ktn at that time yes because i was also running a project on um uh, on rainbow tv on Staten. Mm. uh it's mr right yeah. season one and season two yes and then there was also a, a show called kupatana so there were so many things i was doing at that time mm. So uh, there's only a handful that you, you can take. So yeah. KTN and I had a mutual argument yeah. that um, I, we we don't um, uh, probably redo the contract yeah. until when I'm ready to go back. Yeah, I love how you have such mad energy. Goja, kuko na kitu na kongo me piga kabla wingi ya kusho kuz. No, I I. My mom always remembers. Ofu yani akokuwa kiti. By the mom, ofu leo ametulia. My mom loves you. No, you do that. I'm I'm growing old. I'm growing old. So growing old, the energy goes down a little bit. No, it's because I'm 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 a love of life. I I enjoy the fact that I exist. I celebrate the fact that I exist, and I enjoy the fact that um there can only be one. Dr. Fennec, yeah. and uh, nobody else. So no matter what you come and say, oh, you may say things on your comment section and you s on Twitter and tweet about Dr. Fennec negatively. Yeah. But it's unfortunate that none of those things really, affect you. really affect me because they can never be me. It's always going to be me, 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 and me. <laughs> and if I had an opportunity of probably walking down the walk of faith, mm -hmm. I'll probably say what Snoop Dogg said. First of all, <laughs> apart from God, I want to thank me. So I enjoy life. I enjoy I enjoy the fact that I'm alive. Mm. So me jumping up and down, I'm a happy soul. Yes. So I mean, there are guys who are probably the hospital. They're trying to buy some, some oxygen. We used to joke about buying oxygen until when COVID came in. I'm like, yeah. actually, really, you can actually have to buy oxygen. Yeah. I'm not buying an oxygen. My joints are working. My brain is fully funny, uh, 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 working. I think I'm probably one of the most intelligent people that I know. Yeah. And um, why? I have every reason to thank God for. Yeah. I have a beautiful family. I have beautiful daughters. I, I have a beautiful, successful career. Yes. I, 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 it's just amazing being me. Yeah. So I, I don't find a reason why I should not be jumpy and celebrate and be happy. Have you missed that, please? I will... okay, no, I have... no, 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 no. <laughs> like my mom remembers. Uh, we shall be back. We'll be back. We'll be back. Very soon. We'll be back. We'll be back. We'll be back. But do you think um, mm. that drove uh, jovial nature of yours or your personality? Because mm. you're really jovial, at in person, mm. you're energetic. Do you think it may cost some opportunities? Uh, not that I know of. Yes. 
I know, I know I've ended up doing a lot of because um, also Fonica as a brand, you know, as an artist mm-hmm. is very it's very transverse. Yeah. So I know I know if anything, me being energetic has actually earned me more gigs than I thought. Yeah. Because you can put a phonic on a serious event, he will deliver. Mm. Put a phonic on a comedy show, he's going to deliver. Yes. Put a phonic on an acting role, he's going to deliver. And also put a phonic on a concert, to host a concert as well. And I can basically, because I'm, I'm able to control my energy depending on the audience that I'm talking. Yeah. Yep. So if I don't ask this for my people, Manzinta mm. Jamiwa, when I said you're coming on my show, mm. of course I got some questions somewhere on IG, on uh-huh. my Cash, Cash Gracie, yes. Uh. So some people asked, okay, you came on Kiss. Yes. Uh, a lot of questions to that. Mm. Some people are asking, you're such a big brand. Mm. Why do auditions like the rest? I guess that's a question that only Kiss can can answer on that one. Mm-hmm. I mean... Um, but what I'm a, I'm a firm believer that um, if you're good at what you do, yes. no matter how long your breakthrough will be postponed, it's always going to come through. Yeah. It's always going to come through. So um, I, 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 uh, um, I don't know why, I don't know why Kiss thought so, but the fact that out of all these comedians, or Funeke was actually thought of, and actually thought of the first one. Yeah. It actually says a lot about my brand. It actually now affirms that yes, Dr. Funeke is a big brand. Yeah. He's a voice in the industry, um, and he's a he's a force to work on with. Yeah. So the fact that we we were in that studio, I mean, some people are not in that studio. Yeah. So and and I I would just want to say a big respect, of course, to uh, Radio Africa and of course uh, Kiss One Hundred to be specific, yeah. and um, to Kamene and to Jalas. And with the whole management, the fact that Dr. Fennec as a name came to mind, then that should tell me something. That should tell me that, yes, that I'm a big deal. In the words of Chris Martin, mm. that, yes, I'm a big deal. Yeah. And of course, yes, I'm a big deal. So of if, course you are. Yeah, so if, if we get there, then well and fine. Yeah. But if that one doesn't come, it's simply because God had a better idea yeah. of, uh, of, of where I should head. Yeah. So that's okay. And then others were asking, Yes. Uh, okay, it was the opinion and their thoughts yeah. that uh, your personality kidogo crashed or clashed. Is it clashed or crashed mm. with Kamene and Jalas? Because mm. they were saying you were quite loud and so bubbly, you know, mm. that only come overtake Kamene and Jalas. And at some point they were like, mm. ah, because when they watched the YouTube, see, it's also posted on Kiss YouTube. Yeah. They were like, hey, of Feneke Kidogo, apa, mm. kuna bilana overperform. Do you think that's true? So why should you blame me for over delivery? Please talk to them. It's not, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm here for the people. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm here for the that's, people. That's what I'm gonna say. Yes. Um. I, 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 I was called to do my best. Yes. And I still feel I didn't do my best. Yeah. So it's funny when it's being said that probably I overperformed. Yeah. When I actually didn't do anything yet. Oh. Yes. Okay. Uh-huh. That was nothing. That was. Yeah. I mean, I did radio for eight years. Yeah. And imagine that was how many years ago? Those were five, four years ago. Yeah. Now imagine you're you're taking a phoneke of eight years in the studio, then. Four years, four actually seven, seven, eight years more experience. Yeah. Now imagine the phone you're putting in that studio. You're putting in a beast. Yes. Yes. So <laughs> definitely, I'm gonna buy it. Yeah. Yeah. So, I and 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 uh, I, I. How do I put this? I I, I totally I, I totally got a lot of those sentiments. Yes. That guy is thought, hey, your phone is coming too fast. Yeah. But I uh, I had only one job to do. That was my assignment. Yes. The assignment was to deliver. And uh, I, I like it when people say that I over-delivered. Yeah. But that they should know. <laughs> that was nothing yet. Yeah. I didn't buy it yet. Yes. If I was to be in that <laughs> studio now, mm-hmm. officially, Kamene, Goro, and Dr. Feneke, then guys should prepare. I know my brother Jalas has done an amazing job. Yeah. But if I get into that studio, then all the other radio stations can close their breakfast shows. Because when I get there, mm-hmm. it's mayhem. Yeah. It's chaos. It's yeah. tsunami. Yeah. yeah, it's Russia versus America. <laughs> it's Ukraine <laughs> being destroyed on Kiss Breakfast. Yes, yes. Exactly. Okay, so, so which do you have a moment in your career life that you'll, you miss, you'll go back to and get a chance to rewind and redo it again mm. that you would? Either come on a show, a money, even to my host. I miss, I miss TNL. I miss TNL. That yes, I will I not do. lie. Uh-huh. I, miss, I miss TNL. Mm-hmm. TNL was a... Tinello was, was a beautiful baby that I bathed. Yeah. It was a beautiful idea that I brought into the industry. Mm-hmm. And I was happy when I saw some of my brothers from Dr. Kingori, Chip Kizi, and a few others who took it up. Yeah. Tinello was a beautiful baby that I was, I was happy to bring into the Kenyan industry. So if there's a, if there's a show, I don't want to do it again and again mm-hmm. till I die. Mm-hmm. 
at 99 years yeah. is definitely doctor uh, thousand and level doctor phonic yeah yes biggest regrets biggest regrets now that you mentioned it uh -huh. my biggest regret is not even biting even harder at kiss 100 <laughs> wow yes uh -huh. now that you say that my uh -huh. biggest in fact i should have over over performed uh -huh. times yes. two times two uh -huh. in fact my biggest regret is that i i think I think I took it lightly. Yeah. Yes. Mm. If I, if I'm, and, and trust me, they should not get me to that studio. <laughs> it will not. It will not be. It will not be business as usual. Mm -hmm. We're going to destroy it. Yes. Yes. I love you. Uh, you have such a beautiful wife. Yes. 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 Thank you so much. She's, and then when I saw the comment section, yako, when I'm saying, "Kujaka mwingilia," aksema bibi ni ule tu akwanza. You, you saw that and you replied to that yes, one. Yes. 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 You say I've done my research. I really. You clearly I'm your fan though. I'm your fan though. <laughs> I'm your fan. Have. I'm a fan though. Mm. So I always follow you. Mm. So, kwanza tu ambia. Where did you meet this baby girl? This beautiful woman. Oh. Uh, we still we met yeah, it's um we've been together six years now. Okay. And um we met somewhere at Westlands uh at a gig. And um I we were a few of us who yes. were <laughs> checking her out. Oh wow. And um I'm a firm believer yes. that what is uh, what is the need to lose? I mean I mean I will not die yeah. if I approach that lady. So I approached her mm -hmm. and um I asked for her number. Of course because uh, we were both very high. Yeah. She gave me her name without her number. Oh. But so in the morning I went around on Instagram looking for each and every single corner of Instagram. Yes. And I found an idea that told her, yo, yesterday you gave me only your oh. you gave me only your name mm -hmm. instead of your number as well. And she gave me her number. So after five days of being stood up, mm -hmm. the sixth one she appeared and she normally confesses. The sixth one is because she was hungry. And she came to eat. Okay, babe. Yeah, and of course, six years down the line, and we have a beautiful baby girl, um, AC. So yes. I am, I'm enjoying my, I'm enjoying my marriage. Yes, I'm enjoying. I the only thing I don't tolerate is, and um, and I, I, and I really should say this. Yes, kindly. Uh, it's it's very unfortunate eh? when uh, people on social media. I normally say this before you type something on the comment section. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself, if I was to meet this person face to face, yes. do I have the balls? To repeat the same statement mm -hmm. because me i will knock you and it's 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 known <laughs> it's known that i don't joke around when it yes. comes to when it comes to fees mm. so just ask yourself if i met dr Foneke on the street yes. would i have the balls to say whatever i'm commenting mm. if not then don't comment yeah you get yes because you can't come attacking me attacking my family yes attacking my wife then also disrespectfully shamelessly now attacking my previous marriage, mm -hmm. I will not allow you. Yeah. Because even if my ex wife and I are not okay, she also has her life going on. Yes. So you will not touch it. Yeah. You get? Yeah. So I tell guys, before you come typing things there, mm -hmm. and also know, I have I have three Wi-Fi routers in my house. Mm -hmm. I have enough airtime. Yes. I will I will reply. <laughs> so let's I mean it's just some level of respect. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, for my attack me as a phonic, but don't attack my family. Mm -hmm. Don't attack my ex wife's family. Yes. Don't touch anything that is connected to me in any way. Yeah. Then, of course, from there, we'll have some respect. Yeah. yeah. Do you think, because uh, both your marriages make up on social media? Yes. Like, make up like, out there. Mm. Do you think it has affected now your now marriage? Uh, considering that the previous one with Mika, the queen, was mm. also out there. You know, could nah. like social media may affect your pre no, current marriage? It size. doesn't. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. doesn't. How do you what? cope, though? No, I mean, I don't feed people much about my, my marriage yes. on social media because mm -hmm. it's none of their business again. Mm -hmm. Because once I have to feed you about my, my marriage life, yes. that means when my wife and I have issues, I have to come and explain yeah. to you guys. Mm -hmm. Of which, <laughs> is, you guys don't come to explain to us yeah. that by the way, I'm your fan, but this, this is happening. Mm -hmm. So I don't feel the need why I should explain to you mm -hmm. what is happening in my marriage life. Yeah. So and the, whole, the only way I'm going to do that is me keeping off my social, my life, yeah. my family life away from social media. Mm. Yeah, so I'm only going to feed you about inspiration. I'm only going to inspire you, feed you memes, mm. feed you fashion, <laughs> and uh, other things. <laughs> but <laughs> family. memes. Bus. <laughs> but other things yeah. to do with my marriage, uh, I think there are a few lessons I learned. And I would really wish other celebrities would learn that as well. Yeah. A, a lesson number one. Keep your marriage and your family away from social media. Mm. Just keep it away. Because there's Dr. Fonek and then there's Sunday. Yes. Sunday is the one who's married. Yes. Oh, Fonek is an, a comedian. He's out there. Him is doing his shit. Yeah. 
You get it? Yes. So that's all that's all I can say. Yeah, how is comparing? We are loving. Uh -huh. I mean, Nika and I are the best co-parenters. We talk about our kids. We do everything that is needed. Mm -hmm. We we go to school. Uh, 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 parents stay together. Mm -hmm. We're the best co-parenters. And she has her boyfriend. I have my wife. We're good to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's that one thing people don't know about of when I can? Ah, I don't think there's anything guys don't know about me anymore. Mm -hmm. I think um, at this point, 13 years down the line, <laughs> I think guys literally know everything. They know everything. Yeah, mm. and hopefully like you're quite cheeky. <laughs> uh -huh. So, which is, uh, give us top three things that you do mm. when one is watching. <laughs> that you I love singing. Do, that you I wouldn't do. I, I love singing. Mm -hmm. I unless, unless otherwise. Yes. Um, I'm always singing in the house. Mm -hmm. I, I'm also a dancer. Then when I'm, and then um, what else? What else? I think singing, best singing and cooking. Yeah. Yes, those two. Yeah. Do you think you're living your dream right now? Oh yes. No, I'm not living my dream yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've not <laughs> hey, I've not gotten to I've not gotten to half of what Dr. Feneke wants to be. Mm -hmm. Not yet. Yeah. Yeah. One greatest wish that you have? Greatest wish mm -hmm. is to sit to interview Steve Harvey. Wow. That's my Steve Harvey and Tyler Perry. Uh -huh. That is my greatest wish. Yeah. Yes. Uh what's your take on the Kenyan entertainment industry in general now? There's still much that can be done. Mm -hmm. We just need to expose ourselves better. Do more research mm -hmm. and be more aggressive. Yeah. Yes. All right. What does Dr. Feneke love doing besides, of course, working? I love working. I'm no, a workaholic. Free. Free. Ah, free is just spending time with my daughters mm -hmm. and my family. Yeah. That's all. Oh, as then I love music. I love being out. I don't drink, mm -hmm. but I love just being out and enjoying music. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes. Have your daughters met like what is Sasa? Yeah, they know each other. They play with each other. For real? Yes, they actually have sleepovers. Are their moms? Yeah. So for me, for me, it's a normal, typical, normal life. Guys, please learn, learn from the best of the best. Yeah. <laughs> learn from my the kids, best. My kids, my kids sleep at each other's houses. Mm -hmm. I mean, their time is to go to sleep at Nika's house where the kids are, mm -hmm. and vice versa. Yeah. So it's not really much of a big deal. Like. You've worked alongside am amazing, amazing DJs. Nimgani una missing zaidi when you na chemistry flawless. Um, I love working with DJ Lizny. I love working with DJ Cream. I love working with the uh, DJ Space. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh, no, DJ Keeps, <laughs> then uh, DJ Slim D. Uh -huh. Those are my top five favorite. Yes. Yes. Uh, what can you, oh, three celebrities when you are in Zaidi, Kenya. When you are in Zaidi. I love them. Uh -huh. um, how can I put it? Oh, I love Azian. Uh -huh. She's amazing. Yeah. Um, I love size eight. Uh -huh. um, and uh, who else? Who else? Uh, Wait, you know, all these people are my friends. Wait, yeah. I don't want to get into trouble. They refuse coming <laughs> no. for my show. No. Yeah. All right, so I'll give us a parting shot. And thank you for coming, by the way. You're thank such you a so sweetheart. Oh. Thank you so much as well. Oh, yeah. oh YouTube uh, channel, Leo Kopia. Please mention one, two, three. And of course, two. ladies and gentlemen, make sure you watch and subscribe to Dr. Foneke TV, the biggest, fastest growing uh, YouTube channel right now. And of course, get to subscribe for the uh, my YouTube talk show, Dr. Foneke Live, whereby we have big guests, big conversation, of course, being hosted by big guests as well. Yeah. Thank you so much. And of course, a good thing you're doing. Keep oh. on pushing it hard. Thank you. So I'm so going to subscribe to Blog with McKenna. Please, and of course, subscribe to Blog with McKenna. Glow up, sweetheart. Glow up. Imagine it's my blog. Glow. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, subscribe to Glow up with McKenna. Thank you, my darling. All right. So, guys, thank you so much. That has been our time with the amazing, amazing, energetic. Any, any kind of energy just match up? Don't, eh? Let me say something. No, let me relax. Let me relax. Let me relax. Let me relax. And come on, come on, guys. We are at Pits Cafe. If you want to meet up with Dr. Feneke any day, anytime, just come here. We talk to Pia and any other celebrity. This is our secret special place. Pits Cafe. It's not even secret anymore. When he says it's not even secret anymore. Oh, yeah. Nisha Isema. Nisha Isema. And thank you so much to my boys, Aris Entertainment, Manu and Aviko. I love you so much, my boys. And thank you so much. Subscribe to Glow with Makena. Like, share, comment. I hope you hope you have enjoyed this episode. Go to the comment section, tell me what you wanted to ask about Ofweneke. Mm. to me and then Instagram, Cash Gracie. Follow him on all his socials as well. And we are out. Thank